Right, golf mates, we're back on green keeping duties. You ready for this? It's coming into winter maintenance. You've seen the thumbnail and you're asking yourself why. Well, today we're going to find out why. And why and what we're doing today, David. Okay, right, Liam. Um, obviously, summer season's come to an end now. We've got to start looking at preparing the course for winter. Um, so, heights of cut changes. We go from like the three mil, what we've been cutting during summer, to around about five, just to leave the bit of grass on the greens gives them a bit of buffer and keeps them healthy. Um, we're just going to show you a bit of cutting here. This is our greens cut. This is what normal grass cutting is about. Imagine that as your grass. That's sharp, isn't it? That's, that's sharp. Right. Now, all the golf all the golf mates will have mowers, or people who's watching this video will have mowers. What you want to do now is make sure you've always got your blade set on nice and sharp like that. Um, you want to be looking at raising the cut now for winter. Um, so that's... But Can I ask the, you a question? Yeah. So it's three mil, it's going to get raised to how far? It's probably five. Five mil now. What's that reason? Just to leave a bit more grass on the greens, leave them a little bit more healthy, right, right and a little bit of a buffer. Super. Right. They'll still run nice and smooth, um, and that'll be down to these two gadgets here that we've got. Right, right, okay. Now, this video will actually coincide with an email we sent out to our members explaining what we're going to do for the winter. They'll look at it and say, well, what does that mean? Right, so the first one I'm going to do is to scarify the greens, and that's going to be with a blade, which is this one. If you have a look at these blades, they're, they're set like two inches apart, inch and a half apart. Now these will cut vertically downwards. That one cuts horizontally as the grass grows up, it tops it. Right, get you, get this, you. This one actually goes down into the, if that's the grass, this one goes down below the grass into the soil and it'll rip all the old dead matted out that's there. We all heard of a thatched cottage roof Yep. and the thatch on the top of the roof. So what's thatch? I've heard of that in the past, but what, actually, what is it? Thatch is old, dying, rotting roots that have all been accumulated during the season. A lot of it's live as well. But if it's all if it's all intermingled like that, the grass struggles to break to, free. To break free. Get you. And the water can't get through. That's why I said the thatch cottage roof, the, that would, the thatch stops water getting through into the ground in, in winter. Right, okay. We're going to use these gadgets here to rip through that. If you imagine that as being thatch, we're going to rip through it and open it up so we've got veins of, um, for the water to go down. Brilliant. Like, this is going to keep the drains down. We've got the other one, which is verticutting. Very much the same, but if you look closely at this one, the difference being these blades are a lot closer together. Right? Now, these literally just touch the top of the surface. Hence, they call it verticutting. It's because they're vertically cutting the grass. And where the grass all, when you look close at it, which we'll look at close up on the greens, the grass appears to be laid down and flat and the ball has to weave through it. These little babies, when they spin round, they lift the grass up so the ball rolls along the top like soldiers. That's where you get your smooth greens. When you don't always have to cut the grass short, the grass for speed, you thin the grass out using these. Right, golf mates, we're on the green. We've got the experienced gym, so I'll not be on the machine. The boss won't let me. First job is? We're scarifying. This is basically to take all the top um, dead matted out of the surface, um, followed by mould ploughing and then ver verti draining. Brilliant. But you carry on, Jim. Let's see some good stripes and get some good down. Right, like golf mates, this is what we've actually taken out of the green. We've only done two or three passes just for the demo. At the moment, we will carry on doing the rest of the green, but when we're cutting the green horizontally, we'll take that much off, and you wouldn't have got that off all the green to, in one go. That is literally out of two or three stripes there that we've done, and that's how much we've taken off. Can you imagine how much of that we're going to take off across the old green? What's happening there, if you look closely to it, even though the grass looks quite short, all this is quite long grass, and that built constitutes thatch underneath and it'll stop the water getting through. All these lines you can see now are passages for water to get course, through yeah. and air for the, the, the grass to grow and the roots to grow for it with, with air. Champion. That's what we're looking at. So what's next? Right, um, we've just finished the scary fine now. Um, Brandon's gonna come along and do a clean up cut with the horizontal cutting. Um, we're gonna then follow it up with mold ploughing, which you'll see in the video what the mold plough does and you'll be amazed. That's, that's my secret on this green for today. Right, David, so we've got the machine up. Just run through again what it is. Right, this is the mole plough. Um, Never been seen before by me. No, it's not. Well, we tend to use this when not many golfers are around because they get a bit scared of it and it's like, it's a slow job. Um, and it's just, you'll see how effective it is. Until it's actually working, 
it's hard to understand what it's going to do, but first things first, attached onto the tractor, this disc that you see yep. spins quite sharp. As it's lowered down, that will make a cut in the ground into the turf, yep. to slice the turf. As it goes down lower, this bullet at the bottom here will touch the ground and it'll pull itself in naturally. But this, you see you've got the disc, then there's a blade here that follows down. So that blade is what will leave a slit down into the ground. That's where the water will go down and it'll attach onto the bullet. That is actual, that is the mole. When we say mole ploughing, it's actually ploughing into the ground like normal farmers would do, but this is more technical. That, that's the actual bullet and that will leave a, a solid tube in the ground so the water can come down. So it's down. like an underground little an underground tunnel, isn't it? Tunnel, a little so tunnel. the water will come down and then you said you've got a drain at the front yeah, and it the, just helps with everything. Yeah, there's no drains in the green so the, this will be artificial drainage. That tun that little tunnel in the in the bottom will stay there for a long time because it's in clay. So that Right, because it's a clay it's underneath, clay, it, that's why you're doing it better. Yeah, right, it'll, no, it it'll makes stay more open sense. all the time. It's still got that slit. The water will gradually work its way down into that bullet there. Right, into the tube and it's there's drains at the front of the green that'll this machine will just go over the top of the drain and the water will drop down into the drain nicely brilliant that, that's the theory so what we see now is a bit of action With this operation number four, right? Yep. Verti draining. Now we've had the mole ploughing down there, which has gone down that deep. These tines here now, 12 inches. We won't get them all in, we'll get about 10 to 11 inches. They're going to put a solid tine down into the ground. The idea being the water on the surface won't, won't sit on the surface, it'll go all the way down 11 to 12 inches into the ground. Right? That gets keeps the surface bone dry. We're going to put thousands of holes across this green now, and then we'll follow it up with number five which will be all the tining. Brilliant. I'll, I'll explain to you what that is when we, when we get the machine out. So Tony's now going to carry on over the mole ploughing. All these holes will connect onto that bullet down below that channel. So the water will go down, pick up that channel and disappear. Champion. Okay, Tony, it's over you. Right, operation number five. Right, we've got the olatining now. Um, basically, the olatining. Um, people don't really understand what olatining means, as opposed to spiking. This tube here is hollow. Right, right. so that verti draining was a solid tine. Yeah, because you did is, say tine, so this is hollow. Get yeah, you know, so this yeah. is hollow. That's a tube, and what you'll see when it as the machine starts going, these will go down into the ground. They'll start going up and down like the other tines did. But as that goes into the ground, it'll take a plug of turf out of the ground. It'll fill up into there, and when it goes down again, the next plug will push that one out, and it'll pop up through the top of this one. Get you. That's where the hollow bit comes now, in. Now, most golfers now will see the after effects of this. This is all the see now. The, all the other stuff you've done, we know nothing about. This is what the golfers will see in it. This, this is what generally upsets golfers more than anything. Those tines and everything else, the mold ploughing, the scarifying. We never even see that, do we? We don't see it. It's all superficial. But what we need to do really is take some of the top surface out and that will allow us to put fresh growing material in, like sand. The tine holes, the solid tine holes, they soon close up at the top surface. So you can't really get any new material into there, like sand or top dressing. So the fact that we take a plug out, it leaves a constant solid hole pure circle where we can get sand to drop in. The depths I'm doing at the moment on this one, because we're in winter, it's hard to get top dressing to go down into the ground. So I'm only taking out about two inches, which is plenty to get two inches in the top surface. And those little cores of uh, sand will connect onto the deep tubes of um, where the solid tine has gone. Right? And that'll create my, my drainage down below. Brilliant. That's all we need. Ideally summertime, but winter time, short cores. So that's a great, we had a little chat about that. You do it later on in the months because you like to give the players and the members the greens as best, longer as they can. Yeah, on well, it's a political thing as well. I mean, golfers pay a hell of a lot of money to play on the golf course in good condition all through the season. The last thing they want to see is this machine coming on, taking holes and plugs out, disrupting the surface during the playing season, which is important. Right? You can do all those other operations which you've just done, not a problem. But when you come to doing this, I prefer much to have the, the golfing season over with get all this work done and then I think golfers accept in winter they've got to give something back and let, let the greenkeepers do the job. Right Liam, 
this is what we've got this is hollow tining brilliant right? um if you can look just close where these holes are we've had the mold plowing pre prior to this yep we've had the scarifying and we've had the vertigo draining you can hardly see any of that now because it's taken over by these holes now these holes will stay permanent for a good month or so in its natural shape to allow us to get sand in the first application of sand right will probably fill the best part of it we need to keep brushing that in and then let the rain probably wash it in we might even have the rollers over it vibrate it down and they'll still need topping up probably two or three times to get them really full to the top um, the material we've taken out here right, as an actual core there's some nice turf that turf was perfect all looks nice and bonny that but it's old turf now uh, and the reason we're doing it can you see how that's quite tight there five there's there's the roots right but this top layer let's just squeeze some water out of this now just watch this see the water coming out yep. and that surface that looks bone dry but this this is the thatch layer that holds on to the water right, now as you. winter goes on and we've got day, days and days and days of rain that just stays saturated constantly golfers are forever walking on it right so it's just become, going to become a mush surfaces become uneven so the fact that we can get that's look how tight that is just have a feel of that yeah no I've just been yourself. feeling it myself feel how hard it is that's why the scarifying actually cuts down through that I and mean, moves as much of that as possible and yet still leaves a sur surface to play on so and that's that's quite tight but once we've done this quite a few times that'll actually go a lot freer and we won't get that's the thing to do is get as much and again it's moisture. all air can get in and water air, and air into the roots I mean roots grow in in air spaces they don't grow in soil right everyone okay. says oh you've got good soil or you've got bad soil if you've got air spaces for the roots to grow in you can grow grass in clay sand whatever right okay. as long as you've got air spaces that's the whole idea of doing this but once all this is we're gonna do what we're gonna do we're going to complete the full green yep. right it'll look like this then you're gonna that's where your muscles are gonna come in we'll clean it up it'll take us half an hour 20 minutes to clean it up um, it'll all be nice and clean again like that but what you're going to see is perfect holes right the vertigo drain holes were disappearing yeah. right so this will give it allow us time to get sand into there perfect. the sun's coming out this is going to be absolutely brilliant so the timing's good this timing's perfect so today. we're all going to get sand in today it's we're going to be get, a job done we're going to get sand in today and this green will be finished today brushed in and that flag will be back on the screen this afternoon brilliant absolutely brilliant so we couldn't ask for a better day perfect right. boss what have you done to me lovely green I've just made a little bit of work for you, Liam. Ah, oh, it's just and a this, bit. This is what me and my staff have to do for another 17 greens. Right, Luckily, okay. we've got you today to start us off. I've got the team over there ready and waiting, chomping at the bit. We need to get started, get this green cleared as quick as we can. We've got the top dresser over there waiting. Weather's perfect for us. Let's get some work done, get it cleaned, and back on the green as soon as possible. Love it. Right, our last job now is to backfill it all with sand and we've got Tony on the top dresser behind us and if we're not quite, not careful, he'll cover us in sand, bury us and then he'll disappear. But what he's doing there is reversing back so his wheels are just driving on the sand and then he's going to go back down the same pass so his wheels are not actually sticking ah, to the turf you. or anything like that. So you can just see the sand. We can actually alter that sand to come out more or less whatever we want to what do. What I was going to say Will that sand do all the green or will it take a few visits? It'll, that, that up and now will do all this green. But then what we'll do, we're going to brush it in. Yep. That will be the final operation. And then we'll do them again maybe tomorrow or next week. If it needs just, a bit more. If it needs it, just to give it time to do so. What you're seeing is absolutely brilliant there. You'll get this in two passes. That's fantastic. Right, golf mates, thank you very much for Dave. The last clip you're going to see now is it finished. So, Dave, thank you very much for your team, cheers, for all your hard work. Um, thank you very much, sir. Right, Mitsubishi on point.